What those job numbers may mean, I'm joined by Ryan Patel. He's a global business executive who's worked for publicly traded companies and startups. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks for having me. So as we heard, there are economists and company CFOs confident about the US economy's growth over the next few years. What do you think is driving that optimism? Well, uh, it has to be the tax cuts, right? I mean, they're, they're able to get uh, a little bit of breathing room behind actually, you know, growing their top line, being lean and being able to have some room to grow. And also, you've seen um, consumer spending is a little bit higher. Companies are growing internationally to a certain degree and, and really kind of making sure at home that they're uh, re reaping the benefits. And obviously, there is this, you know, protectionism, like you mentioned, that maybe makes them a little bit more competitive. Now, this week, we did see that U.S. economic growth hit its second longest streak on record. So how close is the country to reaching the Trump administration's growth target of 3%? Well, I, we still have a lot to, lot to go. And as you can see, the, you know, the data today, you know, it, the, the job market's been going, um, it's been, what, seven and a half years, month over month, increasing, adding jobs. And, you know, what is kind of, you want to break down the number a little bit further, is that when you have the 164,000 jobs that were added, the, the amount of people that were looking for jobs and also the, the amount of people um, you know, going forward was different at the end of the day. So I think for me, the, the job market's good. It's a good number. But there's a lot to do this because wage growth didn't really grow either as well. And inflation's come in to increase as well. And to that point, we saw that productivity continues to be an issue. How is that impacting whether wage growth is keeping up with the strength we're seeing in the economy? Well, yeah, I, you, it's kind of the wage growth has been at 2.6%, 2.7, hasn't been able to kind of grow out of that. Um, and we, we're expecting it to have to increase because when the economy is at its height, you've got you know, rising prices that are coming and you've got consumer spending to actually continue to go. And then you have the Feds, uh, the Federal Reserve going to actually in, you know, looking to, in, to increase the interest rate. The, the wages have to grow up more. And when you have 6.5 million jobs that are job openings and employers are looking for workers, we're at this kind of midpoint to where, we're, where are the people that they're looking for. So we mentioned the tax cuts. When several companies did say that they've benefited from these tax cuts, how has that translated into hiring? I don't think it really kind of has, right? You've seen some companies kind of taken the money, haven't really actually given out to the bonus and kind of, you know, helped it put it back into the company growing. I think some companies have taken it as, okay, we're going to take the benefit and maybe you could be hiring more people, but there wasn't a direct correlation. That's what every company is doing. And I think that is where this tax, we'll see what the tax benefit has been at the end of it. And obviously, we have the U.S.-China trade tensions kind of overshadowing how company leaders are trying to plan for the future. So how do you see that affecting their strategies going forward? I, I, I think it, it is. I think it is affecting. I mean, you see business leaders right now in the last few months have been vocal about not wanting to be, get into a trade war with China, especially those companies that do a lot of business uh, in China and internationally. And I think that is kind of out of the character normally of some business, of business CEOs to come out. And I think everyone is kind of paying attention and seeing, you know, right now it is a strategy to see where it ends. Obviously, the last two days they had the meeting um, at a China of the U.S. officials, and it hadn't really much had come out of that meeting except for that they're still continuing to discuss. Um, but like I said, I think it's, it's everyone's watching really closely to see who is going to flinch first. So with that hanging in the balance, are there any other headwinds that you foresee in the U.S. economy this year? Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the most important things is to see if the hike in the federal uh, interest rate is going to be either two to, or three times this year. And I think that's what's made Wall Street a little bit nervous because they, you know, they're thinking that maybe the Fed will actually rise it a little bit faster than the, the Wall Street wants. And I think the, the tariffs and the protectionism, not just of China and the U.S., and I think the how, how the U.S. actually you know, gets into NAFTA, how, how there are other deals in Europe and obviously in Asia, how does that play out as well? I mean, that's as important, if not equally as important, with the China deal, because that also creates maybe leverage and strategy at the end of the deal uh, for everybody. And we know that the Fed does have to strike a very delicate balance. They want the economy to grow, but there are these pressures coming from some of these trade tensions and obviously what we're seeing with wages. So given some of the lack of inflationary pressure and this slow growth in wages, what's your take on the Federal Reserve's pace of its interest rate hikes this year and the impact that might have on economic growth? 
Well, I don't know if you want to be in their seat right now because they're, every day they're watching Wall Street and, and making a decision. Do they want to uh, move it up or not? I think they are in a delicate um, position. You've, you've heard them come out and say that you know, they, they don't want to either accelerate or decelerate. They want to have the right timing. And I think when I, you hear that kind of rhetoric, you feel like they're going to probably get the timing right um, probably in a few months and, and make sure they don't want to create a jolt um, of unnecessary either fear or panic while this is going down. So that's going to be really important because obviously if the Fed, federal jump, jumps the gun, you know, I, I, you know, that can cause some trickle effect. All right, certainly a lot at stake. Thank you so much, Global Business Executive Brian Patel.